When I say giardia, lamblia, you should be thinking about diarrhea. When I say entamoeba, histolytica, you better be thinking about diarrhea. When I say crypto, spiridium, abbreviated as crypto, you better be thinking about diarrhea. These are three protozoans that all cause diarrhea. Can't stress that enough. Uh, and what the medical student needs to be able to do is distinguish these different types of protozoa from each other based upon the types of diarrhea that they form. That's so important. Giardia lamblia causes giardiasis, which is characterized by bloating, flatulence, and foul smelling fatty diarrhea. This is typically seen in the question stem uh, in campers or hikers who consume uh, infected water from like a stream that's infected and contaminated with Giardia lamblia. So I'm going to go ahead and put think campers or hikers. This is often seen in the question stem. Remember that Giardia lamblia is the most common enteric. That's enteric meaning occurring in the intestines. It's the most common enteric parasite in the US and Canada. So examiners love, love, love to ask questions about this. Remember campers and hikers and the transmission is by cysts in water. The diagnosis for Giardia lamblia is going to be looking at the stool. And specifically, we're going to be looking for trophozoites or cysts in stool. We're going to be treating Giardia lamblia with metronidazole. Entamoeba histolytica causes amoebiasis. This is different from giardiasis in that it's going to be causing bloody diarrhea also referred to as dysentery, which is a word describing inflammation of the intestines accompanied by bloody diarrhea. With amoebiasis, we're also going to be seeing a, a liver abscess uh, along with right upper quadrant pain. I'm going to put R-U-Q for right upper quadrant pain along with bloody diarrhea, clearly different from giardiasis. The liver abscess is sometimes described as a anchovy paste exudate. In histology of the liver abscess often shows a flask shaped ulcer. Okay, so if you see in the question stem them talking about bloody diarrhea, obviously don't just automatically think about entamoeba histolytica. There are other things in the differential list, for example, enteroinvasive E. coli and also Shigella. These are just some examples that I want to mention for you to kind of keep your mind open that if in the question stem they're talking about body diarrhea, keep in mind it's it's obviously not just a shoe-in for entamoeba histolytica. It can be other organisms. Transmission, going to be looking for cysts in water. That is how it is transmitted. It is diagnosed by doing serology and or taking a look at the stool. What we can be looking for in the stool are trophozoites or cysts. First aid makes a point out of the trophozoites having red blood cells in the cytoplasm. So that's kind of a high yield point to look for. The cysts will have up to four nuclei. Okay, that's also something that first aid makes a point of. We treat entamoeba histolytica with metronidazole followed by, I'm going to put just plus, iodo. First aid also makes a note that iodoquinol is for the asymptomatic cyst passers. Cryptosporidium, crypto, glaringly high yield point about this is severe diarrhea in AIDS patients. You have to know that. You have to make that connection. In an HIV positive patient presenting with diarrhea, especially watery diarrhea, cryptosporidium is the most common organism that is isolated watery diarrhea. Very severe in the immunocompromised, in the patient with HIV AIDS, okay? In the immunocompetent, however, it's a mild disease. It's important to make that note, and it's called a uh, cryptosporidiosis. But the biggest point is severe diarrhea, watery in HIV AIDS patient, and in the immunocompetent, it's going to be simply a mild uh, watery diarrhea. Uh, unlike Giardia and Entamoeba with their cysts in water, the transmission for cryptosporidium is oocyst. That's with two O's. Oocyst in water. Acid fast oocyst in water. A way that might help you remember that is if you look at cryptosporidium, the actual word, you're going to see two O's, and an O here and an O here. It's a way that might help you remember that we're dealing with oocysts in water for their transmission. CD4 count under 200 cells per millimeter cubed. When the T cell CD4 count is at 200 or below, that's kind of like a, a big sign that we can be dealing with a cryptosporidium uh, infection. That's a massive indicator of immunosuppression with an HIV AIDS patient, the T cell counts dropping. And when it goes under 200, it should be blinking red lights for you to be thinking about crypto, especially if they're talking about diarrhea without question. Diagnosis made by oocysts on acid fast stain. We prevent it by 
filtering city water supplies and also nitazoxanide for the immunocompetent, those without any immunosuppression or uh, HIV AIDS, for example. Now, while on the topic of treatment and drugs, I want to go back to metronidazole, an antibiotic, and I want to say a little thing about it because it's so high yield. The board examiners love to question students about antibiotics. So just a little bit of review on metronidazole. It's bactericidal, which means it kills and destroys bacteria. You'll see some other antibiotics being referred to as bacteriostatic, which means that they simply just stop the bacteria from reproducing and not necessarily killing them. Metronidazole kills and destroys bacteria. It is bactericidal, not bacteriostatic. Remember that it forms free radical toxic metabolites in the bacterial cell that damage DNA. Some of the side effects that we're going to be looking out for with metronidazole that the examiners can definitely ask about is a disulfiram-like reaction when taken with alcohol, basically meaning that the patient's going to get really, really sick when they are taking metronidazole and they combine it with alcohol. It can cause headaches, and also um, the patient can complain of a metallic taste. It can also be used to treat trichomonas, Gardnerella vaginalis, and also anaerobes like bacterioides and C. difficile below the diaphragm. Metronidazole plus pleuroton pump inhibitors like ameprazole and other drugs ending with the suffix of prazole plus clarithromycin. This combination can be used as a triple therapy for H. pylori infection where we're seeing things like ulcers. So triple therapy, metronidazole plus proton pump inhibitors, that's drugs like omeprazole and other prazole drugs, plus clarithromycin for H. pylori. And really the only thing that I, I do want to stress um, is that I'm only talking about protozoans here that cause GI infections that lead to diarrhea. Please, please, please don't forget that there are many other organisms that can cause diarrhea. Covered a lot of information here. I wanted to focus mainly on Cryptosporidium, Tamoeba histolytica, Giardia, um, how it's so important to know that they do cause diarrhea, but how we're going to be differentiating them on the different situations and symptoms and signs of the diarrhea that they cause. We briefly mentioned that the transmission, the diagnosis, the treatment, really, really high yield points that we need to be aware of. I want to stress again that this is not an all-encompassing tutorial on these organisms. What I wanted to do here is just bring up some basically glaringly high yield points that the student just has to be aware of at a bare minimum. Uh, I wanted to bring those to light and I hope it was helpful.